This is the all new Jeep Wrangler Rubicon 4xE, E standing for electric. This is the very first Wrangler that you can actually plug in. If you want to go with the 4xE, you're going to have to go with the four-door unlimited Wrangler. That's all they come with at this time. Uh, they come with three trim levels. There's the Sahara, the Sahara High Altitude, and then the rock-crawling, heavy-duty off-road machine Rubicon. And um, if you want something a little bit more refined, you want to go into something like the High Altitude because it gives you a lot more of the creature comforts, as uh, standard equipment like the heated leather uh, seats and steering wheel, the park parking aids and the driving aids, all of that comes standard on the Rubicon. Some of those things are available, however, it's an option. Uh, regardless of whatever trim level you get, all Wranglers are trail rated. The Rubicon just is just really built for even more gnarly stuff. From a distance, the 4xE looks like a regular Wrangler. It's when you get up a little closer where you'll notice some subtle details like all the blue accents on the trim around the Rubicon. And of course, this one has an extra little door on the driver's side, which is where you can plug it in. The Rubicon comes standard with 17-inch wheels with some nice aggressive off-road rubber. The Sahara comes with all-season tires. All of them do come with skid plates, however, the Rubicon also includes side rock rails. When you get into the Rubicon though, it is a fairly high step in or sit up height, as you can see. It'd be nice if there was a step, but the nice thing, having no step or type of Nerf bar there, it gives you maximum ground clearance. All 4xEs come standard with LED headlamps as well as LED halo style daytime running lights. I really like the look of those and I really didn't plan this. I just like blue. I'm all blue right now. It's just my color. So obviously I like all the blue accents that we mentioned. Uh, so you get the blue tow hooks here, but I love the metallic blue deckling they have on the hood as well. And um, if you do get the base 4xE Sahara, it doesn't come with the blue hooks, by the way. It's only on the high altitude and the Rubicon. Also, top-wise, uh, the 4xE Sahara and the high altitude come standard with a three-piece hard top roof, where this one, the Rubicon, only gets a soft top, but you can get the hard top as an option, or you can get the Sky One Touch Power Roof that we have right there. We'll take a look at that when we get inside. The 4xE is no different when it comes to open-air driving. Like all Wranglers, you can remove the doors, fold the windshield down, and of course, take off the entire top. In the back, standard LED tail lamps. There's another uh, tail lamp right above the synonymous full-size rear-mounted spare tire there. Uh, there is a backup camera, and it is right in the middle of the spare tire there. So once we open the swing-out door, flip up the rear glass, it's a Jeep. Nice, square, fairly tall uh, opening, no frills. Uh, this one does have a kind of a track system for cargo. In the door area, you'll see there are some latches here. You can actually move them, take them right out. I can see this very handy for securing all sorts of uneven or ob-shaped objects in the rear as well. In the back, there is a 12-volt outlet. In the second row, there is a 115-volt uh, AC plug. Its max is 150 watts, though. A couple things I would like to see. I would like to see one of those plugs in the rear here, and I'd like to see more wattage. 150 watts is not a lot, so if you have a pump or a, a larger compressor that you want to power, that's not going to do it. And since they have this PHEV system already, it'd be nice to see them bump it up to something at least like 1,500 watts. All right, let's start it up. That is it. There is 
literally a, just a little bit of a whirring sound. There are three different kind of electric modes. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about the cabin, where you're gonna spend your time when you're driving this thing. And if you're familiar with the, the current Wrangler, well, this is essentially no different. Uh, obviously there is some badging that's kind of blue on this. So the high altitude comes with leather interior. The Rubicon comes with uh, cloth interior. However, you can get the leather option, which this one is equipped with. It's $1,095 uh, for leather steering wheel. It's heated, you have uh, heated leather seats. I would recommend that you get this if you get the Rubicon, just because leather is just so much easier to wipe down and clean off uh, when you get mud and, you know, just when it gets dirty, it's easier. Plus, heated seats, come on. You know, you're out in a rainy forest and it's just, you're soaked and you're cold. Turn on those seats and heat your bum up. Why not? Up front, you have a Uconnect 8.5 inch screen, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto come standard. There is quite a bit of connectivity here. I counted five USBs, I believe. There's two in the front, uh, one type A and one type C. There are uh, two in the back, same thing. And there's one in the middle uh, armrest compartment there so that's five there and I like how they give you the option of having both either type A or type C because still type C is getting more common but not everybody has type C in the middle you have a seven inch display and I like how uh, in the middle that's where your speedometer is it's just a digital display and they've kind of went um, very modern uh, looking it's kind of kind of like a district type of nine type of look it looks pretty cool it's got the broken little font uh, for it we mentioned the different tops. The Sky One Touch is not cheap though. It is $4,000 for this option. But if you value your time and maybe you just, hey, you want to just be topless or go topless just for a second or for a little bit, one touch. There we go. We'll let it open up. I know I'm going to be very, very bright right now because the sun is right above us. But I want to show you what it's like. There we go. So one massive roof opening now. If you do want, as I mentioned, you can take off every single panel, uh, the rear, the rear hatch, so that everything comes uh, off. So you're basically like a new Jeep. It is doable. You do need uh, to have some tools and remove some bolts though. If you don't want the cloth top or this top here, you can go for the three-piece hard top, and that is a $2,000 option. There is another car coming here, and it's really dusty, so I'm gonna close this up. That's the nice thing about this. It's probably not gonna close up in time, though, but it's a lot better than having to pull over and get your panels out and put the roof on there. And we are sealed again. I don't know what it is about Jeeps. I think it's because my kids play this game called Roblox and they own a Jeep in this video game, but they love Jeeps. So uh, we've had quite a few family outings in this. We went boating with it, uh, just threw all our stuff in. And this really is a nice uh, recreational vehicle. It's easy to clean out, but once again, as I said, you know, with, with that leather interior, it's rugged. You don't feel bad if you're taking it over some, um, rougher ground that's for sure this thing will definitely handle it if you're going to be taking your doors off your wrangler for that full open air experience just note that the side view mirrors are connected to the doors meaning that you will not have those mirrors when you're driving however you also have to check with your local regulations of where you live some jurisdictions make it illegal to drive without doors on your vehicle. And so you can only do that if you're on uh, off-road situations. So like I said, everything is pretty well the same as your regular Wrangler, uh, except what is powering it. So under the hood is a two liter four cylinder with a twin scroll turbo that puts out 270 horsepower. And then you have the electric portion of it. So you have two electric motors one on the engine and one uh, right by the transmission and that is powered by a 17 kilowatt hour battery system combined power 375 horsepower and torque is over 400 pound feet of torque so lots of torque and the nice thing about the torque you know electric torque is pretty well instant which is very nice 
when you're when you're off road, um, you just need that torque. You don't need necessarily need the horsepower. You just want that nice uh, rolling torque, and that's what you get with the EV motors here. Power goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission, which is a beautiful thing. There's no no CVTs here, folks. Uh, it's a regular conventional automatic transmission. Uh, however, it does not have a torque converter. In its place, you have an electric motor, and there are clutches that engage and disengage it. So let's talk about the drive. They call it e-select. So you have three buttons. One is hybrid. The one in the middle is electric. So if you just want electric only, and then there's one is for e-save. So in hybrid, this drives like a regular hybrid vehicle uh, when it doesn't need the gas engine, it will use the electric motor. So right now, we are in pure electric right now. The, it's very silent right now, other than the rocks hitting the, the, the underside. If we wanna go pure electric, okay, now this goes and it will use as much electricity as it can and save your fuel. And then there is the e-save. And so if you want, if we hit that, now the gasoline engine is going to kick on. I can see the tachometer go up to about 1500 RPM right now. And that is going to save our electric mode. And why would you want this? Well, there's a couple reasons. First of all, let's say you might want to use your electricity only when, you, when you're in the trail. So while you're driving to the trailhead, you have it on e-save, and then when you're in the trails, you use that electric only. Or you can use that, that electric um, the, the power like your reserve, like your, like your fuel reserve. So if you're getting low on fuel, hey, you can always switch to your electric. That's another reason. Or maybe you use this for commuting and you want to save this for the stop and go traffic. That's also very nice. One thing that I did notice though, in e-save mode, it still operates like a mild hybrid. So if there is next to no load on the vehicle or if you're going down a hill or if you're braking, it actually turns the vehicle off. Let me see if we can, we can make it do it here. It's smart. It's smart. It knows that I'm trying to trick it right now. Okay, there's a hill coming here. Let's see if we can make it do it here. So I'm just cruising along. We're in e-save and I'm going to let off the accelerator. Of course, it's not doing what I, it was doing it all day today. I guess maybe, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, it does do it, take my word for it, which is really nice because even when you're actually saving your electricity, it's still saving fuel. There's a button here, which gives you max regen. If I press that, max regen on, and what is nice is we're going down a hill and it's really slowing us down. We're not using any brakes whatsoever, and it's actually giving us a charge at the same time. This is extremely beneficial. Let's say you're you're going and you're climbing up a up mountain, and on the way down, it's a, it's a long hill, for instance, hey, you put that max region on, you get some extra mileage back into those batteries for absolutely free, and you save your brakes. That is a big, big bonus as well. There's just something that's really cool about being in the outdoors and not really hearing that gasoline engine very often, or none at all. We're going up a hill right now. It's just, it's just really peaceful. And that's another nice thing. If you are doing some, uh, some trail driving, with a group of people, let's say, and it's a rainy day and you're taking turns, maybe going up or down a, a challenging area. Hey, why burn fuel just idling there just so you can remain comfortable in your vehicle? Because there's a lot of waiting around sometimes. So when you can actually just be here comfortable and you're not burning anything and it's just really peaceful and it's very, very nice. I am by no means an expert in 4 by 4 at all. I'm telling you that right now. I have been on some group drives and things. I really enjoy it. However, there are really no good places around where I live to go off-road. But many people have tested the new Wrangler and most people know how capable this Jeep is. They always have been and they just keep on getting better and better. As I mentioned, this is trail rated. Now, one thing that they did with this um, 4 by e is They've placed the batteries underneath the rear passenger seat. 
So on a lot of other EVs, they use like a skateboard setup where the batteries go all on the bottom of the vehicle. And since it did this, it doesn't compromise on any of the ground clearance at all. So the capabilities of this Jeep are exactly the same as you would find in the regular, just pure gas Rubicon. The Rubicon gets Jeep's rock track 4x4 system. It has a two-speed transfer case. It has front and rear Dana 44 axles, and it also has a true lock front and rear lockers as well. And you can control that with the uh, red toggle area just by the gear selector. A lot of you will be crawling this thing uh, over big boulders and obstacles, uh, so you can actually disconnect the sway bar for more articulation and uh, the crawl ratio on this is 77.2 to 1 so plenty of low end crawling torque charging and range wise from empty if you plug it into your regular 110 volt outlet with a supply charger at home it'll take you overnight it'll take you 12 hours to get it up to full uh, if you have a level 2 charger it's going to run you just over two hours so not too bad there is no level 3 option and when it's fully charged you get 25 miles of range or about 40 kilometers i'm getting uh sometimes it's averaging 40 to 43 kilometers in the morning when it shows and once again you can save that um that mileage for you in the electric only if you choose uh, so on road performance this drives like almost every other new wrangler and i've said this in other wrangler reviews for the newer ones they drive so much better than the older generation they're so refined now uh, however there is a little bit of of dead spot in the center of the steering and you do have to realize you are not driving a car you're driving a a big rugged um four by four off-road vehicle and and it and it shows so it really excels when you're off-road but on-road it's not bad but just don't expect that you're driving a real nimble little sports sedan or something like that one thing to note though even though there's a lack of sound in the drivetrain other than a, a little bit of a whir from the electric motors um, since this one has that sky one touch power top this can be a little bit noisy or it's actually not the top that's noisy but you do hear uh, uh, quite a bit of wind noise at higher highway speeds on this vehicle uh, of course if we went had the hard tops that would probably eliminate a lot of it but you, i don't know if you can hear the, the wind buffeting a little bit right now Anyways, just be aware of that. Most Jeep owners will not be affected whatsoever. It's part of the experience. And another bonus though, if you check with your jurisdiction where you live, since this is a PHEV with a large battery, a 17 kilowatt hour, you may qualify for rebates when you purchase or lease this vehicle. Also, it may qualify you to run this in the HOV lane with a single occupant. So the carpool lane with a single person, that's a big uh, selling point for a lot of people. If you're going to use this once in a while or every day for commuting and you have a highway section, that's a big, big, big bonus. I really like the concept of putting a PHEV in a Wrangler. These vehicles don't get great fuel economy to begin with, regardless of what uh, type of trim or what power plant that you get. And you're basically driving a big square block when you're driving a Jeep. You're driving a wall essentially. And even you really notice it at highway speeds. When you let off on that throttle, this vehicle really slows down very, very quick from the air resistance. So having a PHEV system to help uh, for the fuel economy is definitely welcome by me, hands down. I've said it before, you know, put these PHEV systems uh, in vehicles like pickup trucks or Jeeps like this, vehicles that don't get great mileage to begin with. It's such a huge bonus. And then there's some so many added other bonuses for the performance aspect uh, of it, not just for fuel economy. One thing about the Wranglers, there are a lot of options, a lot of trims. There's like 16 different models to choose from. You got two door, four door, different top configurations and all the different power plants from four cylinder, the V6, the Eco Diesel, uh, the soon to be 392 Hemi V8 coming in the Wrangler and now the addition of this 4xE plug-in hybrid. It really does mean that if you're interested in an off-road adventure vehicle like a Wrangler, 
there is one out there for you. There's one out for everybody. This new 4xe starts at just under $50,000 Canadian if you go for the Sahara High Altitude or the off-road Rubicon beast that we have here. It's going to run you just under $60,000. But take note, you can add on quite a few packages and options to this like this one has. It has the front camera. It has the Sky One Touch roof, the leather interior, just to name a few. And it can option out probably closer to $70,000. So it is not an inexpensive proposition at all. However, you do have to realize that these new Wranglers aren't just off-road vehicles anymore. They are your everyday family uh, grocery getter. They're your family SUV. They're your convertible. They're your recreational vehicle. They're everything all in one. Plus now they're your EV vehicle as well. So when you factor all of that in, it doesn't make it as painful. And remember, Jeeps have amazing resale value. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Give it a thumbs up if you like it. Let me know what do you think of this new 4xe, the whole concept, because there will be more models of this 4xe coming out in other Jeep products for sure. And uh, if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button. And as I mentioned, if you live in the West Coast area in the lower mainland of British Columbia, if you have somewhere or you know somewhere where I can test vehicles like this, or you want to help do a test, maybe you have a, a, a big, off-road track yourself. Leave a comment or leave a message below and uh, let's make it happen. Can you believe this thing is actually running right now? It's been running the whole time. It's kept the interior nice and cool. See you later.